Welcome to We Can Talk About This, conversations with Jonathan and Krista Threlfall about ideas shaping us and the world we live in. And today we are going to be talking about social media, otherwise known as SM. Nobody's calling it that. I'm calling it that. <laughs> it's SM. All the cool kids call it that. Starting now. Hashtag SM. <laughs> that's right. So everyone knows SM stands for social media, and that's our big topic for today. Yes. So. Our big topic is should you quit social media? Mm -hmm. Here's our roadmap of what we're going to cover. First, why are we talking about this? Second, dangers with social media. And then should you quit it? And some recommendations with that. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, why are we talking about this? Because it seems like something that has already been talked about a lot mm -hmm. and... Why are we beating a dead horse, so to say? I think it's a very live horse. Mm. I think this horse is whinnying and neighing mm. and prancing. Uh, the social media horse is very well and alive. And I don't think that everything has said that needs to be said. I think it's part of an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you probably clicked on this link to watch this video via social media, yeah. I'm assuming. And I think that it continues to be a matter of uh, a Christian discipleship mm -hmm. of how a person, what does it mean for a Christian to follow Jesus in a world in which social media is very much a reality. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that conversation is going to be ended just because a book was published in 2021 about the dangers of social media and again in 2022. But I think this is going to be something that we'll have to continue to talk about. Um, should you quit it? If not, how should you continue to engage with it? Yeah. Um, if so, should you ever come back? Those, are, those mm -hmm. I think, are, are valid questions for people to think about. And we all go through different seasons of life too. So where you were a couple of years ago, you may be in a different place now. Yeah. So that's that's why I think this is really worth talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. You agree? I do agree. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So should we jump right into dangers of social media? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah. yeah. So what are some dangers of social media? What are some reasons why someone might say, I need to quit this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are you asking me or do you want to jump into it? Sure. Okay. Okay, one thing that we were talking about is the fact that being on social media, endless scrolling can produce laziness. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about physical laziness, though that is. Oh, it could be part of it. That is an aspect. Yeah. Yes. Um, but let's talk about the physical laziness yeah, yeah. first. So it, it can be a, a big time waster. Right. Where instead of doing the things that need to be done, whether that's around your house or your actual nine to five job right. or doing things with your kids, helping them with homework mm -hmm. or being present and involved with them. It can be a way that that we can be right. physically lazy and just sort of revert back to what's easy. Yes. Physically lazy in the fact that your your body has to be in a certain position to be able to scroll mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there's certain things you can't do uh if you're if you're on your phone or, or scrolling through social media so there's a physical component to that laziness yep. um i i think there's a mental component to the laziness too because you're you're being barraged with image after image or interesting thing after interesting thing and as soon as you become bored with that one you move on to the next instead of actually using your mind to engage actively with something which takes mm -hmm. mental work mm -hmm. and so there's a kind of mind numbing thing that happens when you scroll and that would be a reason if someone says, man, I'm going to quit this, you might be saying, I'm going to be, I'm quitting mental laziness. I'm quitting this impulse of mind, this tendency of mind to just scroll mindlessly mm -hmm. uh, through my social media feed. Yes, which I actually read a book earlier this year called Time Management for Mortals. And in that, the author is saying that a lot of times when we're working on something and then we're like, okay, I just, I'm going to check Facebook real fast. Mm -hmm. It's because we, we're tired of working on it. Yeah. We just want, want like a quick brain break mm -hmm. rather than continuing to work on that. And brain breaks can be good and useful, mm -hmm. um, but they can also be something that you you think it's going to be a quick brain break, but it turns out to be 30 minutes later, your allotted time for working on that project is done. Yes. And you have now just squandered yeah. 30 minutes yeah. scrolling. And in the concentration break too yeah. is a loss mm -hmm. because your mind has been concentrating on something. And then the moment it feels like pressure, the moment you feel the strain of the concentration, you break the concentration to do something easier. And then to try to get back onto the train of thought, well, it's it's you've wasted a lot of time, I, I tend to think of concentration almost like setting up a, a row of dominoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that concentration is broken, it's like all the dominoes you've been setting 
down, you, you, they all fall over. You have to set them back up again. Mm -hmm. and, and that happens, I think, not just with social media, but with interruptions. But if social media becomes a self-imposed interruption because it's the easiest, it's the easy thing to do, like that would be a reason someone would say, I'm done with this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's it's so accessible yeah. as well. Yeah. So just accessible, whether we have the apps on our phones or on the computer, it's yeah. just so easy to yeah. get a quick brain break. Yeah. So physical and mental laziness. Yeah. So another one would be emotional laziness. Mm -hmm. um, and that is when you are scrolling through social media, you're you're seeing what people are putting out there. And a lot of times they're, they're really bad, terrible, heartbreaking, uh, sad things that you're seeing and you're just kind of scrolling by them. Whereas if, if you were to actually encounter that reality or talk to that person in real life, there is no way you would not be a human being if you just go next, next, next. But what you've done is like, you're, you're almost training your mind to have this, uh, compassion numbness, mm -hmm. like, oh, I see that. But that, uh, say, you know, I don't know what the, you know, someone, someone's kid is in the hospital that for me served a slight fraction of a second entertainment purpose because it was something interesting to see before I scrolled onto the next thing. And I'm, I might, I might have a twinge of concern or something like that, but it doesn't grab me enough to pause and say, maybe I should pray for this person. Maybe we should reach out to this person. Yeah. To clarify what you mean by entertainment purpose. Not entertainment. I, yeah. I, would, I would say diversion. Yeah. It was just, a, it, it, it diverted my attention momentarily. Right. Uh, it's not that I thought it was, oh, this is hilarious. You know, right. no, I just mean like, oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. You yeah. Know, diversion whoa, whoa, whoa. might be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a second. Wait, you, you're, you're now encountering more bad and good things in people's lives than you ever have before. Meanwhile, exercising less and less deliberate compassion toward them. Mm -hmm. I think that would be, it's a rarely noticed um, detrimental effect of social media, but I think that would be a reason for someone to say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to quit because it is leading me. It is numbing me emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when in, when in your physical <laughs> relational life, would you ever have that many things parading across right. your eyes and, and into your mind? Like, good things. This person got engaged. This person got a new car. This right. person's on their 17th vacation for the month. Like, <laughs> like all of these things, even if they're good things that now things that you have to process and right. deal with. Yeah. And, and I don't think we're adequately taking time to process. Right. Them. So right. an, emo an emotional aspect. There. And I don't think we could process them mm -hmm. as mortals. I don't think it would be possible. Like, are, are we really intended to in f a five minutes time to really process the fact that this person is on their third vacation this this year and this person uh, has just been diagnosed with this cancer and this person has just published a book? I mean, are we really, are we really set up to engage with that kind mm -hmm. of thing without just creating a, I don't know, uh, maybe like an emotional callus or something mm -hmm. that says, well, this isn't for engagement. This is for my own diversion purposes that i think is a pretty bad effect mm -hmm. of, of social media yeah um so uh, i think another uh reason why someone would quit is because it can cultivate jealousy yeah before you say that mm -hmm. though i social media is impacting our relationships sure so maybe a, creating a relational laziness yes as well okay, re yes relational laziness thank you yeah yeah because um in social media, I, I heard someone describe it as kind of having friends without the work mm -hmm. of it. But I don't even think it's even to that level of friends, like real relationships without the work, because there's there's like no skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Like if someone puts out there that like, I don't know, they had a great day and they made this loaf of bread or, or whatever, you might see it without them even knowing you saw it. Mm -hmm. And they they put it out there for everyone to see, but they didn't actually say it to you. Right. It has a totally different meaning than if they text that and say, hey, I'm so proud of this loaf of bread I just made. Mm -hmm. um, and then then that is relating because right. it's it's this person to this person. Right. But but on social media, there's there's not as much of a, a skin in the game with with good things mm -hmm. and with hard things. Right. And, and I think it's easier to see something, see someone say something that you disagree with and instead of engaging with them like you may in a face-to-face, -face, it's easy to pull back. Right, right. Or 
as we've all seen, I'm sure, just to start in some huge social media fight. Right, right. But rarely, rarely do you see it done well. I, I think the lack of engagement yeah. on social media, um, someone posts something and w with Facebook, uh, Twitter or X now, you can't, um, sometimes you can't tell how many people saw that post. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might've scrolled by it and it's easy for there to be, it, uh, the, the lack of skin in the game that you just mentioned also um, causes us to form conclusions about something without engaging with that person about our conclusions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can create a, you can be very judgmental, uh, even while nobody knows you're being judgmental, just because you're watching, oh, mm, yep, they did this. Oh my goodness, they did this, you know? Mm -hmm. And and pretty soon you you become the spectator of everyone's life, forming conclusions about it on your own. Um, and that does all, con all kinds of, I think, bad things to your soul. It's also, it, it's easy to forget that that person is a whole person and what they put on social media is just one little slice um of of who they are it, it, yes yes and and so it, it can be easy to forget that like they're they are a whole person and even even that thing that they said really harshly or really angry angrily um that that's just a little part of who they are yeah. like you can't divorce that from them right. that's that's them but but it's just one part of them and that might not be it might just be one percent of them you right. know and so i think it's easy to see see this thing and see one post or posts over a year and conclude this is who that person is when in reality that's just their social media life that's the one slice of their life that they want other people to see mm -hmm. too so it's not just that accidentally and randomly mm -hmm. you have certain you know, a, a slight view, a slice of, of someone's life. It's that's the one they chose to project out of all the other things going on, which I think ties into the the social laziness there uh, is that you you are you're seeing one what one person is projecting, but you're not without the opportunity to see all the kinds of things they wish they didn't project mm -hmm. that, that you might see with them when they were if you were with them in person. So when you're with someone in person, they'll say things in a certain way or behave in a certain way or look in a certain way that they didn't, didn't, wouldn't really want to put on social media. But as a person, as a friend or as an acquaintance, you have to deal with that too. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's another way in which just scrolling, engaging on social media can reinforce um, social laziness. Mm -hmm. um, boy, we're giving social media beating, but it's going to continue because we really need to get a full view of this. So um, jealousy. jealousy. Yeah, we're just about to talk about jealousy. Talk about that a little bit, Krista. How does social media cultivate jealousy? Um, well, here's a personal example. Several years ago, I think it was like the morning of Valentine's Day. Um, we had like maybe two or three kids at the time. And we we don't do a lot for Valentine's Day. We love each other, and we usually celebrate in some we celebrate some little way. But it's not like it's not like a huge huge deal. And I remember I'm home with like babies, and I was scrolling social media, and I see one of my Facebook friends had gotten this beautiful, like fine gem ring um, from her husband for Valentine's Day. And he was going to take her to Disney World. They didn't, mind you, live in Florida. It was just like a big thing that he had presented to her on that day. And I was like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't compete. And then I'm well, like, wait, how about I can't compete? <laughs> right. By I, I mean my marriage. Right. Yeah. Um. And then like, okay, does Jonathan even love me? Mm. Like, do, you know, all these, all these comparison yeah, things. Yeah. And that's just, that's just one example. Yeah. Um, but I think there's so many uh, just daily e examples of like, oh, their kids, their kids always look perfect. Their hair is always mm -hmm. amazing. Like yeah. they're, they're always getting promoted. Um, yeah. They're always getting published. They're always getting, you know, for who, it, it, whatever your desire or yeah. whatever your area of, of longing is they're always like on a date. everyone else is is exceeding you in those areas yeah and and that can create this this intense discontentment yeah my life is terrible i don't do anything and then what that can do is fuel your desire to then push further project even more intensely like well here's what i'm doing here's what i'm doing yeah when you can but that is a very very powerfully um bad effect mm -hmm. of social media it can also um 
make you discontent with with like your relationships, like I mm-hmm. just referenced with um, Jonathan and I, or your like financial status. It can also make you really discontent and depressed as on, on yourself. Like yeah. I'm the worst mom because I send my kids to lunch with this terrible lunch and this person's always putting together this or to, yeah. you know, like I can't yeah. do, I can't take my kids to this place for ice cream because we're fi- really financially strapped right, right now. And they're always doing things like that. And I'm, yeah. I can't compete like that. So I think just as parents, mm-hmm. um, that it can be a big form of jealousy. Yes. I think there's kind of a twisted backlash to that mm-hmm. in which people start posting their messy lives. And okay, everyone's posting their perfect pictures. Everyone's posting their perfect life. Well, let me show you how messy my life is. All right. And then it becomes a contest to be how, to see how authentic we can be, yeah. which is like, okay, seriously, um, what is this about? Is this really about who you are? Or again, what you're trying to project to other people? And um, it's, that's just, it's really complicated. It's really messy, but that's what social media does. Uh, what people do with social media, I should say. Um, another one, it can reinforce loneliness. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one I put here too, a, a reason why someone would quit is, um, is that it tends to gamify life. And by that, I mean, at, and with the advent of social media, now you can quantify, put a n- numeric value to the worth of something you post, uh, the, the worth of a relational mm-hmm. expression of your relationship with other people. Like you put a picture there. How many likes did it get? How many retweets did it get? Um, how many loves? How many did it loves? Get? How many loves did it get? <laughs> how many? How many people com- You know, commented on it but didn't like it, and so now, now you begin. It's a point system, right? Mm. It, it's it's numbers. You're yeah. assigning numbers to certain things, and then which creates a, a desire to next time I post something, I want to get more, mm-hmm. or someone posts something similar. And they get more, way more likes than you. So now there's this comparison thing going on 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 social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, threads, threads. I don't do threads very much, but I think that's Instagram's form of Twitter, roughly speaking. Yeah. Anyway, are you done? I want to keep on talking <laughs> no. about different social media. I want to go back to you talked about loneliness. Yeah. And I think that's a big one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because it's, you know, you're sitting at home scrolling. Yeah. And you see all these other people doing all these fun yeah. things with other people. Yeah. And then it can make you feel very, very lonely and out of the loop. And they're always doing things. They they have so many friends. Uh, how do they know her? Like, to, you yeah. know, so it can reinforce, reinforce right. those feelings as well. Yeah. yeah. So. Any other dangers you wanted to bring out? You know what? We... We just touched on a few of the very accessible dangers. Yes. But I'll just il- allude to, in passing, some dangers that have been uh, mentioned. Jonathan Haidt, for example, has this, uh, it's a two-year-old post now on uh, The Atlantic when he he's um, talking about why America has become uh, so stupid in the past 10 years. Um, and he's, ta- he's talking about the effects of social media, that it is... Uh, unraveling our society in so many different ways. It's creating um, radicalization. It polarizes people. It it favors the most inflammatory kinds of posts, mm-hmm. and it leads to confirmation bias, which you tend to see only the things that you already agree with, mm-hmm. and you can find uh, things you already agree with. So you get these uh, these echo chambers. It silos human knowledge. There's all kinds of effects that th- these broad scale effects that it's doing to us as a society that in addition to these like more granular accessible social uh, like uh, relational effects and and spiritual effects that it's having on us so i, I just say that as an aside say i'm we're aware of those kinds of things as, as as reasons why someone might say i'm done with social media um so there's there's so much more there that could be said but i think we've covered a lot of the ways in which someone the main reason someone might say i'm done with this yeah um it, i've been taking too much time i become obsessed with it I've, I've, um, I'm just hating myself of feeling lonely. I can't focus on anything. Right. Yeah. Even like the, we didn't touch on that really either. I mean, a little bit with the mental laziness, but like, yeah. 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 Uh, so the question then is, should you, should you quit social media? Okay. And and if so, how do you know? And Krista, I think we were talking about this earlier. I think you had a really good thought and answer on that. So what would you say if someone came up to you and said, Krista, I'm thinking about quitting social media. Can you give me any advice? All right. Well, and if you know me in in person, like you're part of my local church <laughs> um, or you've listened to all these podcasts, you probably know what I'm going to say already. And it's straight from Galatians 
walk by the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I think one thing with social media that we, we are looking at what everyone else is doing and trying to figure out what we should do by what they're doing. And, mm. and so sometimes there's a trend of like, okay, I'm off social media. It's just ruining my life, blah, blah, blah. And then we're like, I should do that too. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but maybe not. And, and we are followers of Jesus and we're speaking to people who are most likely followers of Jesus or Christians. And so in that, like God has, God has a plan for what, what you should do. And maybe you should quit social media. Um, but maybe you should just be let, let your light shine on it mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, so I think e even in our social media usage, we can we can do that um, comparison in every area of our lives, right. even if it's not related to that. Like, oh, they're doing that. I should do that. Oh, yeah. they're not doing that. I shouldn't do that. Right. You know, rather than living by the spirit, looking to his word for guidance, knowing who he's made us to be mm -hmm. and even even our bandwidths right. with different things. We we don't all have the same bandwidths at the same time. Like mm -hmm. um, a couple weeks ago, I deleted my Facebook app and messaging app off of my phone. Um, and I still access it on my computer. But just doing that, that has really lessened my time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just something I felt like there was a lot of mental noise. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I just wanted, I thought that was just an easy way to kind of reduce that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, yeah, that's one thing. I, I would say, I appreciate your answer, mm -hmm. like walk by the spirit. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if some of our listeners or viewers might be wondering, can you break that down a little bit more for us, mm -hmm. for me personally? Um, how, would you nuance that at all? Would you say, well, if, if you're like this, then I would recommend going this direction. If you're like this, maybe a different direction. Can you do that? Or would you just put it out there and say, figure it out yourself? Mm. I think that's a very good question. I think there are, there are ways that you could, maybe there are signs that might show like, Hey, this is, this is not really a good thing for me this is not a good thing i'm i am neglecting things mm. in my life i'm neglecting people maybe as we were talking about the compassion fatigue mm. you're like yeah that's me mm -hmm. um and and those might be things in your life but even in that mm -hmm. pray about it right like if if we are christians like that we should be taking these things to our father in right. heaven. So no, I, I I think there are other things that God can use to indicate, um, yeah, you need to pull back on that. Right. Yeah. Or no, keep going with this. Mm -hmm. But um, but being alert to that mm -hmm. through prayer, through letting our our minds be guided by scripture. Yeah. So no, I'm going to stick with walk by the spirit. I would definitely stick with walk <laughs> of the spirit. And I, I'm not saying it's either walk by the spirit or walk by something else. Yeah. I'm saying even within that. Yeah. Um, what, one thing that I would encourage people to think about is maybe your thought is social media is either my being addicted to this soul sucking or, or uh, thing called social media or not at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd recalibrate your thinking and ask, how can this be used for God's glory yeah. and my growth in godliness? Mm -hmm. What is this for? And is it mastering me in all its ugliness? Or am I somehow seeing that it is, like anything else, a tool that can be used for God's glory? Mm -hmm. Have I tried to limit it in certain ways? Have I tried, as Krista mentioned, to take it off certain devices so it's less accessible to me when I'm most likely to mindlessly scroll? Mm -hmm. so I think there's there's a, a, a lot of different options between just embracing fully for all its negative effects we just talked about and and quitting completely. Mm -hmm. I, I would encourage people to, I would say, have you come up with a mission statement mm -hmm. for your use of social media? I will engage on Facebook in order to uh, connect with people I appreciate and encourage anyone that reads my posts, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, something and and if anything you do goes out of those boundaries, then have people to hold you accountable, mm -hmm. or at least the very the very exercise of writing out a, a mission statement for it, I think yeah. would help you in many ways um, overcome this. So instead of just letting this thing be everything that it could be to your flesh, to that part of you that is bent away from God and towards selfishness, 
control it. Yeah. You exercise dominion, God-given dominion yes. over it. Yeah. And I, I would, to me, it would be a great loss if all Christians saw social media as an evil in itself, mm -hmm. which it is not an evil in itself, and then retreated from it and let all perverse ideas run rampant. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a bad thing. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, as proof, <laughs> Jonathan and I are on social media. Yeah. So we have not at this point quit social media. But I do think your idea of a, a mission statement and even just like taking that to the Lord and praying before you're engaging, like, God, help, like, may the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable, whether they're in person or online, mm -hmm. um, be acceptable in, in his sight. I also was reading recently First and Second Timothy, and Paul is saying in there um, that he keeps he keeps mm. under his body, he mm. brings it under under subjection. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think what you were saying as far as viewing social media as a tool is very important. Mm. That you that it's a tool that you are using for the glory of God mm. and the building up of His kingdom and yeah. the edification of other people. Yeah rather than it being something that's using you. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, here's something, because I will frequently just pull off of social media just to give give a break. Um, and I have discovered that sometimes I, I can think, this is going to just help me mentally, give me mm. some more space mentally. Um, I have a lot of ways of filling my mind <laughs> besides social media. So just, just, you might think, okay, this is going to be so helpful. This is where all of my problems are stemming from. And you you get off of it. And, you know, our hearts are deceitful. And we can right. come up with a whole bunch of, you know, our, the idol factory yeah. of our hearts. And we can come up with a whole bunch of things that um, can hinder our spiritual walk yeah. and our physical, mental wellness right. just from our own hearts yes. without the aid of social media. So yes. So whether we're on so social media or not, we do need to fight <laughs> this the spiritual fight and yeah. have supernatural power from th the spirit. Right. People found ways to waste their time 500 years ago. Right. People found ways to numb their compassion a yeah. thousand years ago. It, it, it's just that we've found new ways and quitting social media doesn't mean you're embracing a disciplined way of life or spirit way, a spirit filled way of life. It just means you're quitting social media. It means it, it could be, it could be an exercise of, of self-discipline mm -hmm. and it could be an exercise, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. you, you may be simply, uh, it actually could be. <laughs> You could be actually deceiving yourself in a sense by quitting social media and thinking, like you said, that you could be, I mean, everything's going to solve itself. But our hearts are sneaky. Our hearts are. And so I think that we have to re completely recalibrate the way we view these kinds of things. Under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, yeah. what, I, again, the question for the Christian in every domain of life is what does it look like for Jesus to be Lord of this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and how could it be part of, of his His kingdom? We, we can pray with social media that God's will would be done and his His kingdom would come on social media as it is in heaven. Yeah, yeah. And, and start, seek to spread that. Yes, and I love that question. What, what does it look like for Jesus to be Lord of my Facebook interactions? Yeah. 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 Like actually ask yourself that. Yeah. And, and the fruit of the spirit, that's not just for real life. Like mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, patience. You mean, mean non-social media life? You you you're saying the fruit of the spirit is for is for a uh, social media life. What I say, I think I said it's not just for real life. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not just for. So I consider this real. Okay. Real yeah, life, yeah. As, real as as social media life. Social media. Okay. It's part of real life. Yeah. But it's also there's like a little veneer. Of yeah, it, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So that that. Right. I you, the fruit of the spirit, that applies to your social media interactions yeah. as well. Yeah. Very good. So. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Yes. And uh, we'd love to hear any feedback you have. Uh, you can look at more resources on WeCanTalkAboutThisPodcast.com and we have some uh, links to resources that you may find helpful in your use of social media. We'll Thank see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us.